My name is Andrew Blanton. Let me see if this works. Maybe. Okay, you can almost see it on here. But that's me playing marimba, and this is my vocation, and you can almost hear it on here, and it doesn't matter so much. Um, but this is very much the world that I come from, uh, playing classical music. I'm a classical musician. Uh, I play percussion. I, uh, my marimba is my main instrument. Um, and so, um, I got really into this idea of how do we extend that instrument and how do uh, me as a percussionist uh, build out on that instrument and how can I explore perception through that instrument. Um, this, this idea is sort of the, the basis of a lot of my work now and I think a lot about how we can use technology to explore perception uh, as humans as these sort of meat uh, bags of water and meat that walk around, right? <laughs> we have, uh, we have, you know, uh, different types of ways that we interpret our reality. Um, so uh, I use technic, uh, I use technology to explore that uh, as an extension of percussion, uh, which was sort of where I got started in all this. So if that sounds abstract, uh, let me uh, just go into how I do that. Um, and so to do so, I basically pursue three simultaneous paths. Uh, there's a technical path, conceptual, and performative. So within those three paths, the first one, technical, how does the thing work? Can I get it to work? Will it work? Yes. The second path, conceptual, why am I doing this? Is this some sort of just, you know, uh, work with technology? Is this technology for technology's sake? Hopefully not. Uh, and then the third path, as I'm a drummer, um, I like to perform with this technology. So I think of a lot of the technology as a complement figure to classical percussion that I play. Um, and in doing so, I build out these pieces to uh, perform with live on stage. So they have to work, which sort of ties back into that technical side of things. Um, tonight, I'm going to be presenting two works. Uh, the first one is called Modulator, which is an app, and I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, the second one is sort of a framework that I'm calling tentatively Mystic Talon. Um, so the first one, Modulator, and I'm gonna have to go back for my bag in one second, but uh, I started developing creative apps and thinking about that use of technology um, and how can we extend the application on mobile devices, this idea of ubiquitous computing, how does that, you know, because each one of us have one of these things in our pocket, right? So how do we as artists uh, work with that technology? And so um, in building that, uh, I started with ideas of feedback loops and building feedback within systems. Um, I released Modulator a few years ago uh, and I started from the uh, first app that I released. I'm on my fourth one now, but the first one uh, that I released was using the Novocaine framework, which is a way to work with audio that was released out of Princeton. Um, the, uh, I subsequently then moved to using libpd, um, which is another library where it embeds an instance of pure data uh, within iOS, um, which I found to be incredibly helpful uh, to do that. So. Um, I developed Modulator at Stime, which is the studio for electro-instrumental music in Amsterdam. Um, and the interesting thing about Stime is that when you're there, it's actually, uh, there, there's like the uh, history of synthesis in their basement. They have synthesizers going all the way back to the 60s. And I think the interesting thing about the history of synthesizers is that there were a lot of technical constraints that were imposed on synthesizers from the hardware perspective. So, I think about those technical constraints a lot in the same way that I think about mobile platforms, right? Because we don't have unlimited processor power uh, and they're fairly small platforms to develop for. Um, so uh, when I started developing uh, Modulator, I was working from this idea of a matrix synth. So I'm gonna go grab this one second. So, in working from this idea of a matrix synth, 
Um, one of the one of the principles of a matrix synth, anyway, was that um, if you if you have limited resources uh, within your hardware platform, uh, you can actually combine synthesizers together to get novel synthesizers, right? And that was one of the approaches that I took in building the underlying framework uh, for for modulators. So, um, I guess more interestingly than me talking about it is to begin to show you. So if you can see, I'm not sure how well you can see up here, but it sort of has that same look as a matrix synth, right? So I'm using the same type of idea. Um, and again, as I said, as an artist, I'm really interested in this idea of cross-modal perception. How do we represent one mode of perception, say for instance, sound, with another mode of perception, which maybe is tactility? So in this, I was looking at actually touching the sound waves without touching the device. And in fact, uh, I think you can hear this out there, that this is all real-time sound manipulation. So in my practice as a drummer, I got really into extending the voicings of these instruments, right? Uh, in development of creative applications and using these devices for something that maybe they're not necessarily meant to do, uh, I, was ex I was interested in extending beyond the boundaries of this device and thinking about how we could use these in maybe novel and performative ways. Um, the other sort of important component of these is that these devices for me are more like a bucket of sensors, right? So there's all sorts of things. And, and maybe from a performance perspective, can we end up tapping into the pitch, bend, and yaw of these devices, right? If we think about this being in 3D space, then how does this device interact with this 3D space that it's immersed in? So, yeah, if you guys have any, um, any questions about that, uh, you know, I can certainly uh, show you uh, the app. And that's uh, in the App Store at M0DULADOR. Um, but I do think, I do think uh, this idea of how do we use technology in a critical way and how do we actually use technology in a way that's a bit more than maybe just a celebration of what these devices can do, because they're really powerful. But how do we as artists begin to take these devices and expand beyond maybe what their intended use is? And how do we reappropriate this technology for something a bit more interesting? So. Um, Next, I guess I'm going to move on to uh, this framework that I've been building, which is uh, tentatively called Mystic Talent. And um, as I was saying, this is really a framework for performance. So um, I did so by using uh, the Unity game engine plus Max MSP as sort of like an extension of Unity as maybe an advanced controller, if you think of it that way. Um, and I began to build basically art pieces within Unity in 3D space. Um, and I was doing so by uh, visualizing sound um, or maybe making objects in 3D space and then manipulating those objects with sound and then taking those objects and then extracting sound out of those objects. So these are a lot of, uh, basically I would call them visual synthesizers. Um, in that same way. Um, and you can see sort of some of the a demonstration of what the visual might look like. And I'll show some of this later um, uh, once I'm done talking here. Um, but you can also see the sort of interface that drives it all. And this is a bit more of the uh, components that were interesting to me. So um, how, do, how do I begin to break this down technically? And I've been working toward a more modular framework um, because there's, again, a lot of overhead, especially with real-time audio processing. Um, I've been building out sections of my patch in real time. Um, and that, you can see here, uh, once the patch is un unlocked, um, I'm more interested in using like really a modular design and using like the this patcher object to build out sections in real time and then take those away in real time also as I don't need them. So 
this idea of how do you have an application that can sort of build out components of itself and then collapse components of itself as you don't need them to take away computational overhead uh, has been something that I'm really interested in lately. Um, hopefully that's not too far down the rabbit hole. Um, but I, I guess with that said, that sort of technical component of things, and we can talk more about that maybe in a bit if you guys uh, are interested, but that technical component of things is important, but I'm also really interested in the conceptual side of things. So conceptually, I'm working with uh, the human connectome, um, which is a fairly robust data set. Um, I was working with some brain scientists from uh, the University of Texas in their uh, Center for Vital Longevity, um, and they had a brain, a, set of data that was about 440 connections uh, in the brain. So each one of those is connected to one another and it's all in 3D space and it's a static data set. Um, so when you get that data set, uh, you end up with you know 440 squared, which comes out to something around 77,000 connections in the brain um, that I'm trying to visualize in real time, which computationally isn't anything crazy, but it's not super easy either. Um, so I was taking that idea along with the uh, Intel Montecito chip, which was one of the first uh, pieces of hardware, from my understanding, that was uh, optimizing the chip architecture, the way data flows through the chip, uh, through um, basically procedural scripts, right, to understand how data can flow through these chips. Um, and I also think that's really interesting. Uh, and connected with slime mold, um, uh, models of urban centers and what type of data we can extract from slime mold. Um, so these three concepts together sort of form the conceptual basis of the work, which is how can procedural urban growth and our larger impact on the planet be reflected through visual imagery uh, as well as drums. So there is this underlying narrative of the work that I'm interested in. Um, and how can we add a conceptual framework to art and science collaborations with meaningful artistic contributions? Um, and so a lot of these ideas that I was looking at are more rooted in, well, does large scale biological systems reflect the macro level biological systems, right? So can we pr consider large scale urban growth in the same way that we consider the way we're developing chips. Are the development of computer chips the same, a reflection of human nature? Uh, and I think they are in some way. And so this idea was interesting for me artistically. Um, and so to sort of like bring that all back, um, there are some people who are working in this field also that I'm really influenced by, um, artists such as Dan Sandine and Phil Morton, uh, who are, did really interesting work, or currently doing interesting work as well, but did really interesting work in the 70s uh, in Chicago with visual synthesizers. Um, Noisefold, who I think is uh, amazing and one of my uh, teachers, um, who also builds visual synthesizers, and I started learning about this same idea from. Um, Lillian Schwartz, who I think her work is uh, exquisite. Um, yeah, Ruth Levitt, who also was an uh, early pioneer in computer art. So how does this reflection, how do we have early work that was happening in Fortran reflect onto what contemporary discourse is happening now? Um, and how is this discourse changing and evolving over time? Um, and also uh, Gregory Bateson in cybernetic theory. So how can we have multiple systems of feedback loops working together uh, to create larger systems? these sort of cybernetic systems um, that you have data flowing throughout. So again, with a lot of the pieces that I'm working on, uh, I've been c focusing on this idea of building feedback systems and multiple feedback systems that are uh, connected together, as you saw with the app, uh, and you'll see shortly with the drums. Um, so I'm going to uh, quickly play, maybe just do a demo. I'm not really gonna play much of these pieces, but just the uh, introduction of these two different sections of the same piece, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys can get a little taste for the stuff that I'm doing now.
Thank you so much. So anyway, that's going to conclude basically um, a lot of the work that I do. Uh, yeah, I look forward to having a conversation with you guys afterward about some of the work if you're interested in talking about it. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.